Hi, my name is Vena. I'm originally from Rio, but I live in Nandi. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm John from Kornabuan Tapua. I love listening to Today FM. It rocks. Bula, I'm Teopola. Bula, I'm Atlisi. We love listening to Today FM because it rocks in bar. Bula, my name is Tisa. I love listening to Today FM. Today's hit music on Today FM. Tonight, Fiji Rugby Union hands sevens player contracts. Over a thousand people lose limbs due to diabetes. And Water Authority faces meter challenges. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spitt. Good news for players on the eve of the Wellington Sevens tournament. The Fiji Rugby Union has confirmed that they have issued contracts to all members of the National Seven side. This announcement puts to rest the recent controversy the FRU came under fire for, having failed to contract players ahead of the start of this season's World Series. Vashnil Prasad with this exclusive. It's like everything else in life. The contract saga has also come to pass. It's uh, confirmed by coach prior to his departure. I can confirm that uh, 14 players uh, who are now in Wellington have been offered contracts. Um, and we hope uh, you know, it will motivate them uh, to do well eh, while they're out there. The FRU says the contract comes in three tiers, like the previous one, where players were contracted under gold, silver or bronze categories. The union has also revealed the duration of these contracts. I think uh, the terms of the contracts is quite uh, confidential. Uh, but uh, yeah, we've offered them contracts uh, for the season uh, 2017 2018 at the series. Fiji Barber's coach Josovo welcomes the news. It's good that they've been contracted and uh, it will boost their morale and also they have especially uh, preparing for the Wellington Sevens and uh, uh, Sydney Sevens. This positive step by FRU has defense support as well. Well, that's a good idea now. Uh, for us in Fiji, we have a lot of talent here in Fiji. So, that's a, that's a very good news. I think when they got the contract, 100%, they won the game from uh, Wellington. The good thing that our players have been contracted for the first past years and now they can look after their family well. Coach Gareth Beiba expects to contract more players later in the season with hopes of achieving a hat-trick by winning the Sevens World Series silverware for the third consecutive time. We now join Vashnil Prasad live. Vashnil, what more can you tell us about the Fiji Sevens team a day out from the tournament? Thank you, Jackie. This contract offer is expected to motivate the players in the Wellington Sevens from tomorrow. Well, that hasn't hindered their preparations in Wellington. As of today, I spoke to Fiji Sevens team manager, Johnny Nirua, who says today was the Jesse presentation day and the captain's run. The Jesse presentation was done by Fiji's ambassador to New Zealand, Filimone Wangambada. So all in all, if this contract issue is ended, these world champions are expected to rise once again come Sunday. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Vashnil. In a shocking revelation, 1,869 people have lost at least one of their limbs as a result of diabetes in the last two years. Minister for Health and Medical Services Rosie Akbar spoke of the startling statistic at the launch of Health and Fitness Month in Suva today. Pranita Prakash has more. As the fight against a non-communicable disease continues, the health minister says the financial burden is on the rise. Uh, we are talking about 1,869 families who have been affected. Again, these are just baseline figures. There are many more out there that we need to, to tap into. Losing a limb um, often affects not only the individual who has lost the limb, but also the family members who need help both supporting uh, the amputee and adjusting to the possible changes in the family's financial uh, situation. Over $300,000 of taxpayers' money was used on overseas treatment of patients with heart disease last year. And the major fight against NCDs is getting people to change their lifestyle. If we start today, it's a good start to a healthy lifestyle. And physical activity, we are just promoting 30 minutes of exercise. You don't have to take 30 minutes one day. You can take 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes at midday, and 10 minutes in the evening. So those are the two key messages. Healthy play, 
in lymphedia of the plate to be treated with. Non-communicable disease is a silent killer. It affects thousands around the country and the choice is up to you to take up a healthy lifestyle. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Access to pipe water continues to be a major issue for resettled squatters at Vesari outside Suva. Despite a year in their new home, settlers still don't know when they will get tapped water. Sainani Boyla tells us more. Water supply is something people resettled in Veraisi have been wanting since they arrived. We've been told to come and build our houses here at Veraisi. Water Authority of Fiji is working on installing water meters and they are just so slow because we need water every day. More than 30 families here in Veresi settlement have been without water since October last year. For Bereniki Tabusa, living in a place they call home without a basic need is an everyday struggle. We use only a single bathroom. Due to all these people that have been uh, shifted to Veresi settlement from Kilikali to Veresi, we just use two, ba two bathrooms right now. So we don't trust anyone. Maybe there will be something happen. Rape and uh, even children, uh, women using bathrooms. So we need water. Water Authority of Fiji Chief Executive Opetaya Ravai says WEF is struggling to respond to demands from squatter settlements. Quite difficult. It's a challenge you know, to, uh, to provide water where you have not planned for. And you know, the squatter uh, issue right now is there's any vacant and in Suva, you know, overnight people build homes and uh, they expect, you know, services to be provided straight away. Sometimes it takes a bit of time because of uh, we don't have pipes there. He adds WEF doesn't have water pipes leading to most of these settlements. This create a problem since they must cut across other infrastructure in order to provide service. Sainian Mboila, FBC News. The Fiji Sugar Corporation's four biggest capital diversification projects have been shelved. The projects were supposed to keep the industry afloat. However, the new board and management believe the feasibility studies now need another round of independent vetting. Reforms have been the answer to an ailing sugar industry, but the four main projects within it have now been suspended. Government, with the support of PS Ministry for Sugar, is facilitating an independent review of the feasibility studies undertaken by FSE, and we, we are actually reassessing for transparency and as to the commercial viability of these projects. The feasibility studies justified a cogeneration and ethanol plant in Ratawai, a sugar refinery in Lambasa, and a syrup mill in Penang. The FSC has already poured money into preparing for these projects, but it's interesting to note the board chair talking about transparency in the feasibility studies. Meanwhile, for 2017, sugarcane from the Penang sector will continue to be sent to Rarawai. We are aware of the need this year to have this cane transported directly from the farms to Rarawai Mill to avoid dumping at Penang Mill Yard and double handling. The field officers need to do more, uh, be engaged with the farmers. The chairman said that uh, uh, farmers need motivation. There are many, many precedents around the, the world of sugar on those systems you talk about. So we have a number of areas that we can go and take best practice from. Industry leaders have described fundamental and critical problems in almost every aspect of the business. These need to be dealt with before FSC can move forward. Edwin Nunn. FBC News. The Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority says there is still a large number of taxpayers not declaring their correct income. Chief Executive Viswanath Das says despite the low tax rates in Fiji, there are still people who live within a culture of dishonesty. Kelly Vavala reports. It is unfair to tax paying population when a number of people in the country do not pay their taxes. Given the lower tax rates, it's really no point not paying the taxes so you know but you know it falls back to the taxpayer culture you know the the the, the culture of dishonesty that uh, we have in Fiji we want to you know help uplift that FBC News took to the streets today to ask Fijians why they think some people do not pay their taxes because they want more money and, and I think uh, some people cannot afford with a tax rate people they want more in their pockets Dust is urging all Fijians to report any known cases of tax evasion to FERCA 
and also for taxpayers to continue complying with the tax laws. Kelly Vadala, FPC News. Still ahead, double celebrations for Chinese community in Fiji. And American sailors bring joy to all people's home. My name is Kamal Roshni. We are from Mere Te. And Mitchi FM is the best station. My name is Messi. We are from Gold Town Tawwa, Mere Te. And Mitchi is hot in Tawwa. Hi, we are Bajels. We love Mitchi FM because it's hot. Nibes Tawra Ba Mere Te. We listen to Mitchi FM. It's very hot. Mitchi FM. It's hot. It's Chinese New Year tomorrow, marking the year of the rooster. It will also culminate 162 years since the first Chinese arrived in Fiji, with a pavilion to mark an unofficial Chinatown in the capital city. Maggie Boyle tells us more. On the cusp of Chinese New Year and celebrations have already begun. China Cultural Center Director Zhen Fu Den tells us more about what the year of the rooster signifies. They always give us uh, have something to do with sound with the bright, with the future, with the pros prosperous, with goodwill, bright. So we always wish the young people, if you're a year of the rooster, you should have a good future. Adding to the celebrations, Terry Walk in Suva has been transformed to represent what was once the hub of all Fijian Chinese businesses. It was given to us as a gift to the Fiji Chinese community. And we thought, what better place to erect this pavilion than in Terry Walk itself? And that's not all. Sito says a book tracing the first Chinese family settlers here will be hot off the press tomorrow. It has about 40 odd um, uh, stories on um, Chinese families in Fiji, why they came to Fiji, how they settled, um, very moving and touching stories when you read about how our um, parents, how our families came in the early days. The year of the rooster is upon us and much like the animal's characteristics, their predictions are Celebrations tomorrow will kick off with Chinese performances at the Fiji Museum. In the afternoon, the Prime Minister of Varangi Bainimarama will unveil the pavilion on Terry Walk. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Fiji's biggest marijuana trial involving more than 160 kilograms of the drug was called before the High Court this morning. Two men from Wainimbuka charged with the offence are alleged to have cultivated more than 400 marijuana plants. Shireen Shivan reports. <laughs> Waisake Kalolia and Kaminieli Nangeleda are charged with unlawful cultivation of illicit drugs. The two were alleged to have planted more than 400 marijuana plants at Nambolini village in Wenimbuka in January 2016. After a week-long trial, the closing submissions were made today. Defense submitted that the prosecution has failed to prove its case, saying that the accused were never taken back to the farm to prove that drugs seized actually belonged to them. They also submitted that Kalolia and Nangeleda were seen at the farm, but there's no evidence that they were cultivating the plants. Defense also argues the accused were found in possession of dried leaves and the prosecution without any verification linked it with cultivation charges. They also say the police investigator mentioned that informers led them to the arrest. However, those informers were never brought to court. Prosecution says the two accused were under surveillance two months before the raid and arrest, and both had clear knowledge of the farm. The 160 kg drugs were produced in court as evidence. Judge Justice Salesitemo will make his closing submissions on Monday. Sharin Shivan, FBC News. A former police officer has been found guilty of three counts of rape and one count of indecent assault by assessors in the Suva High Court. They found 41-year-old Michael Shalendra Pratap not guilty of one count of sexual assault. High Court Judge Justice Vincent Pereira will deliver his judgment on Monday. Pratap has been remanded. Residents at the Samambula home were thrilled to meet visitors from the crew of the destroyer USS Michael Murphy today. More than 20 sailors took time out to clean the home inside and out and provided the residents with much-needed medical assistance. Ana Ravulo has more. It was an unusual morning for residents at the Samambula home when the crew of the USS Michael Murphy decided not only to visit them but beautify their home as well. 
You can see them uh, in the Mbula colors. Uh, this morning we sang uh, Mbula America to the soldiers that came in. I think they've completed two plots of cassava. Maybe we'll harvest them in the next uh, three or four months. The sailors team leader says that they were more than happy to have spent the morning with the residents. Um, basically, we talked to some people at the embassy and gave us this idea to come visit the um, the senior citizens. Yeah. Um, pretty excited to be here and to get you know some uh, be around y'all and uh, see what the Fiji culture is all about. Mm -hmm. The visitors say helping the residents at the home is something that they were looking forward to. This gesture sure did bring smiles to the faces of those at the home. And apart from this visit, there are more planned before the sailors depart. Anna Ravulo, FBC News. The Ministry of Education says it's the responsibility of school teachers to check for expiry dates of milk and wheat bix before it's distributed to Year 1 students. Minister Mahindra Reddy says any school distributing expired milk and wheat bix to children will be investigated. The school teachers were supposed to check the expiry date. Uh, left over in, in uh, end of November last year. What we said to schools was those ones which won't expire by 19th of January this, this, this month, they will keep it and send us the data. Rachel now joins us for the latest in the world of business. Good evening. Coming up in business, we take a look at inflation projection for Fiji. And later on in Go in Fiji, European Union and UN bodies to continue helping nations like Fiji. And later on in Sports with Jamie, new football transfer window sparks interest. Stay with us. The year and infl inflation is projected at around 2.5%. Fluctuations in 2017 will be largely driven by oil and food prices, barring any major setbacks such as natural disasters. The Reserve Bank of Fiji says the inflation rate rose last year due to high demands from construction materials following tropical cyclone Winston. Inflation peaked at 4.3% in November 2016, but dropped to 3.9% a month later. Please Global Limited has announced Stefan Ali as the new Chief Operating Officer. Chairman Warwick Please says Ali brings with him over 30 years of experience in the field. He says this is a new role which the company introduced due to the growth achieved over the years. Pleased to welcome Mr Ali to Please Global. Because of our continuing growth, we are expanding the management capacity of the business by creating this new role. Stefan's well known to the business and conversely knows our business well, having served as a director for six years until 2015. Uh, through that period, in that capacity of director, he made valuable contributions to the business and we know he'll make a meaningful and positive impact on our business in this executive role. The US stock markets has surged to record heights since the election of Donald Trump as president. Elisa Pedi from HFC Bank tells us just how this happened. Yes, indeed. It was history in the making on Wednesday when the Dow Jones Industrial Average climbed past 20,000. This was due to Donald Trump's pro-growth initiatives, which reassured investors and boosted stocks into record territory. Reuters stated that the Dow rose 155.12 points to 20,067.83 to set the record at 4 p.m. New York time. Since Trump's election, it's up 9.5%. All this movement in the market has strengthened the Fijian dollar and the US dollar as well. Meanwhile, currencies like the Australian and New Zealand dollars have weakened. Now let's take a look at today's exchange rates. The Chinese yuan is down by 10 cents compared to yesterday, closing in at 3.25. The US dollar was also down by 10 points at 47 cents. 
The Australian and New Zealand dollar was also was closing rather in at 62 cents and 64 cents respectively. The PNG Kina was down by 10 cents closing in at $1.31, while the Euro and the South Korean won were both up closing in at 44 cents and $527 respectively. On to the commodities market, oil went up compared to yesterday, closing in at $56.18 a barrel. Gold continues to drop, closing in at $1,189 an ounce, while silver rose slightly, closing in at $16.86 an ounce. How do development programs impact our daily lives and help broke the country? A new documentary attempts to provide answers while also encouraging inclusive consultations and providing space for debate on current and emerging development priorities. Savara Tumbua reports. The documentary showcases the work undertaken by SCAFI and sheds light on the impact of the project on different communities. His Excellency the President, Major General Retired George Conrote says it was a timely initiative for his island of Rotoma. I'm very pleased to learn that the program had a very positive outcome or effect on the community, including heaven, an immediate effect in resolving disagreements surrounding the appointment of one of the chiefs on the island. SCAFI, funded by the European Union, is all about giving communities a voice. The SCAFI project also demonstrated that development partners like the EU and the United Nations Development Program are well placed to support government in reaching out to citizens and members of the community to engage in Fiji's governance and democratic processes. Sabara Tambua, FBC News. And that's a wrap from the business desk. Sports is up next with Jamie. And I hear the Fiji Sevens team has been named, Jamie. Yes, you heard right. Are you excited about the tournament as well? Of course, I'm very excited. And all my money is on Fiji, of course. That's the spirit. Good evening in sports after the break. We take a look at Fiji's lineup for the Wellington Sevens. And Fiji football transfer window to open next week. This and more coming up. My name is Kanto. I'm from Ba. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Mulu Fiji, my name is Florence Ratu. I'm from Corner Number One in Tabua, and I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits every day and all day. Hi, my name is Anna, and I'm from the soccer crazy town of Ba. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Vodafone Fiji 7's coach Gareth Baber has named his final 13-member squad for the Wellington tournament. Baber has dropped speedster Nathaniel Lamba Lamba from the squad and has named tough forward Mesulame Kunavula as the 13th player who will only be drafted into the team if there is an injury. The new coach has opted for experienced players for the tournament. Amenoni Nasilesila, Alibreti Veto Kani and Vatemo Ravavo make their return into the team Oseko Nisao will lead the side with regulars Jerry Tuwai, Chasa Veramaloa and Samsoni Virviri. And the Fiji Sevens boys and their new coach have also made the headlines in New Zealand. TV1 News spoke to the team ahead of tomorrow's Wellington Sevens, focusing on their gold medal win in Rio and the new coach that's taken over. Cape Town Sevens champions England hope to continue with its momentum in Wellington this weekend. England's powerful forwards are expected to play a vital role in the tournament when facing teams like Kenya and Argentina in its pool. Vasil Prasad has more. England's sevens veteran player James Rodwell believes they have improved on its weak areas and will go into the tournament on a strong footing. Kickoffs um, on getting the ball back for your team is, is a massive area that we, we look at in training. Possession is, is really important in, in the game of sevens. The 32-year-old says England needs to get the momentum from the first game in order to win its second title this season. Get that set piece spot on. And when, we, when I first started, we were playing against backs in the scrum. It was quite, quite a lot of fun, really. 
now obviously a lot of teams are bringing that, they've sort of seen how important it is around the set piece to make sure you guarantee your ball for your, for your team. England has a powerful pack of forwards who are expected to lead the charge in getting the job done. He's got the, the big the physical forwards that you know bring that strength to the game. What's become more to the part now is that, that hybrid forward where a lot of them have come from being a back in 15s and maybe playing in a forward position in the sevens now. The pass over the top. England last won the title in 2014 when they beat Kenya 24-19. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. And a reminder, you can catch the entire Wellington Sevens live on FBC TV starting at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Nominees for the 2016 Fiji Sports Awards will receive special recognition at an event a week before the major awards presentation next month. This was confirmed by Fiji Sports Council CEO Lichiana Lombuka. Meli Tavanga tells us more. This year's awards will be totally different from the past years. On February 10th, the Fiji Sports Awards Committee will host a special night specifically for the 64 nominees to be recognized. It's a night just for them. So we'll have sponsors present, we'll have their family members present, and this is where they will get an acknowledgement just for the work that they've done in the last um, sporting year. Meanwhile, the major awards presentation will take place a week later on February the 17th. Tickets to that event went on sale from today. They are $60 per head and that's, uh, that includes a night of uh, dinner. So you have the cocktails, the dinner, entertainment. Fiji National Sports Commission Peter Mazi says the awards are a give back to all athletes who raise Fiji's flag in international and local sports. It's a way that we can acknowledge them for the work that they really do. And we get a lot of enjoyment out of it, as you well know. The 2016 Fiji Sports Awards presentation will be held at the Vodafone Arena in Suva. Melitawanga, FBC Sports. The Fiji Football Association player transfer window opens next Wednesday. The mid-season window will last for 15 days, allowing players at all levels a chance to change districts if they wish to. We'll hit there with more. The mid-season transfer window provides the opportunity for players and clubs to shuffle the deck and make new deals. We have passed the word round. We had a meeting, uh, the board, board meeting and council meeting last week. Uh, we have reminded the district associations that all the registrations and transfers must take place within this week, this period. Kumar comes in with a cross step. Bai and Rewa will take full advantage of this as they try to strengthen their brigades for the upcoming OFC Champions League. They can also apply for a sort of a foreign players as well and get them registered during this period. Uh, the period fits in very well with the program, of the O League program. Meanwhile, the Suva Football Association will hold its annual general meeting this Sunday where a new president will be elected. Transfer of players will be decided after this AGM. The issues uh, which will be discussed in the AGM is, I think, is mostly the elections for the president and uh, three VP positions which is vacant will be done. And I think apart from that, uh, basically, basically, I think it's, it's uh, the accounts. Eh? The accounts and, uh, and then from there how we will be moving forward. Eh? Ritesh Pratap is set to be the next president as he is the only nominee for the post. The Whites have made some crucial changes to their administration. We are likely to see a changed outfit when they take the field for their first time in the new year. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. 34 local rugby league coaches met at the Vodafone Arena in Suva this morning to attend a national coaching clinic. The clinic organized by the Fiji National Rugby League intends to upskill and increase the general knowledge of the sport for the coaches. The one-day clinic emphasized upon basic rugby league structures with the hope of the new knowledge being passed on to players. I want to teach the guys not how to coach, but what, the reason why and aims and how to make them better coaches as well and get, get the, understand the players as well, which is what it's about. That's it from sports this evening. Coming up, weather with Angie. But before I go, last night in sports we showed you rugby players dancing. Tonight, in the world of weird and wonderful, rugby players swimming with eels. Find out more after the break.
na programu ni masmasu ana mataklai lai oya otoni kurna bila mai guna goru na makete hina toka pe do tale takini ana baro na radio fijuan gena na domo ibiti na radio fijuan na domo ibiti na bonga ni bnn There is no denying that social media is somewhat taking over the world, but it also means, like every new phenomena, there are some negatives that should be avoided. Rachel Nutt tells us just what we need to do to protect ourselves from embarrassing social media experiences. It's important to remember that despite protections offered by social media developers, visually anyone can see what you are posting on your accounts. Firstly, remember to always avoid arguments. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion, so have a little bit of tolerance. Secondly, never make drunk posts. Sure, pictures of you and your friends at the bar are great, but tweeting about how drunk or hungover you are is 100% no when it comes to social media. Thirdly, avoid work-related drama on social media. Don't tweet about how much you hate your boss. Don't talk about how bad your day was at the office. Your company will find out and you could get into serious trouble for it. Always try and see these platforms as ways to de-stress or as a pastime instead of a venting ground. Angie joins us now with the weather and also to let us know how it's looking for the weekend. Good evening and welcome to the weather world. Thank God it's Friday. A very warm one too as sunny spells prevailed over most of Fiji. The good news is we'll have few showers later tonight to cool us off. Now let's check out what the burning worst was like. The Thames got up in the th lower 30s rather. Hope you made the most out of today's sunshine and put the pickles out to dry. Eastwards from Peck Harbour to Suva, it was mostly sunny with light winds. And in the beautiful north, a very hot one for Lambasa as well at 32 with Savu Savu a degree lower at 31. It'll be warm and dry tomorrow, a bit like today with high chances of light rain as usual in the east. Looking further ahead on to Sunday, a mix of sun and clouds with possible rain for the eastern areas with the rest of the country expected to be dry. A perfect day to avoid the harsh elements by staying indoors to watch the Wellington 7's finals. And out at sea, southeast winds stay into 15 knots with moderate seas. Great conditions for fishing tonight. The next low tide is at 12, 12.44 a.m. rather, tomorrow morning with high tide at 6.54 a.m. Remember, there is a new moon tomorrow, so expect very high and very low tides. And that's the weather scene for today, Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. On Fiji Impulse today, we ask, what should people do to fight NCDs? Uh, exercise regularly and uh, eat healthy food. Eat uh, healthy food, exercise every day. Uh, people should improve their health. Uh, they should uh, exercise their body uh, daily, eat uh, healthy food and uh, yeah, do that minutes work. I think we should exercise, uh, have a good diet and sleep early. Ever heard of Fanga Mamona in New Zealand? Well, history has it that in 1989, after objecting to new council boundaries, residents declared Afanga Momona a republic with their own president and even passports. To this day, the tradition of celebrating Fanga Momona Republic Day continues with one very special, or should I say, slithery attraction that Waikato Chiefs players got to experience firsthand. Recapping the main stories for tonight, Fiji Rugby Union hands sevens player contracts. Over a thousand people lose limbs due to diabetes and Water Authority faces water meter challenges. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. On to our poll question, this week we are asking, can Fiji win the 2017 Wellington Sevens? To answer, visit our FBC website. The shot of the day comes from Taniela Vetata, taken in Denarau Nandi. The sun, a fiery orb, gradually receding, giving the sky an assortment of shades, a blend of oranges and yellows. 
Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at ifbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight from the team and I. Have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Bye for now. असफली बात करता है और रेडियो फिजी टू हमें बहुत पसंद है और रेडियो फिजी टू के आलंसा लोग जितना है बहुत अच्छे हैं लोग हैं बहुत लाइक करता है रेडियो फिजी टू हमारा नाम रोनिता है हम नेली से हैं हमें रेडियो फिजी टू पे पुराने पुराने गाने अच्छे लगते हैं हमारा नाम सोनू है बाम मार्केट टैक्सी ड्राइवर रेडियो फ